Peace, peace, family, and we are now live. Ooh-wee, man, we're going to have a show for you tonight. Look who I'm here with. I missed Doc last time he came on the channel, so I'm glad I, I got the opportunity to uh, kick it with him. You know, it's a vibe when me and Doc is on. It's not just about me interviewing him. You know, I just appreciate being able to talk to the good doctor. When you have an elder that's full of wisdom, it's um, it's energy, it's it's food, it's it's enlightening, it's a blessing. So, Dr. Valentine, once again, I want to welcome you back. Welcome you back to the platform, my brother. Thank you. It's always my pleasure, brother. Always. Indeed. We're gonna have a great show tonight, family. Uh, we do we actually doing a live QA with you, the people, tonight. Give y'all an opportunity to talk to uh Dr. Valentine about some things going on. I want to ask him about a couple of things before we get started, especially with all the smoke and all this fires and stuff going on. But before we do that, let's get to a few commercials. I'm gonna get to a few commercials. Make sure you hit the like button, family. Make sure you tell your friends and family we are now live and we will be back in one second. Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself, it's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out. My pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla PD and the Forest on Amazon today. Hey family, it's King Simon, the founder of Numerovation. Remember, if you want to book a session with me and get a Numerovation consultation, all you have to do is text me your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. And if you want any of my books, go to linktree forward slash King Simon, the Numerovator. That's King Simon, the Numerovator. And your books are available on Amazon. Remember, I'm the El Numero Uno, the Numerovator himself. And if you want to book a session, all you have to do is text me. Make sure you get my books on Amazon. I love you. Peace. All right, all right, and we are back. Let me pin this uh, link to the top of the chat for those of you who would like to come on live and ask Dr. Valentine a question. You are more than welcome to, and I know a lot of you would love to do that. So once again, family, we're taking live Q and A from the people. Click on the link in the chat. It's pinned at the top, and you could come on here and ask Doc. It's one question a person, family. So I, I want to say that again: one question a person. Don't come on here. We want to give. There's a limited amount of time Doc's going to be on here. We want to give everybody a chance to ask their question. With that being said, Doc, I said I'm glad to have you on here. We're getting ready for the webinar. Um, we're excited about the webinar. Let me just show this flyer real quick, Doc, because this flyer mm -hmm. is, is – uh, it makes you uh, – I mean, I can't wait. Where is this at? Let me see. Uh, yeah, I kind of brought in the uh, the Stargate. I put yeah. the Stargate right there. Yeah, man. I'm the reference, and uh, I used the symbol – at the the so-called um, what's that place over there in New York, United Nations? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they gave you a a, a kind of a s subtle or a covert uh, reality of what the map of the world really looks like. Right. That wreath around it, of course, is representative of the Vatican and uh, its its control over the world. Uh -huh. And uh, the rest of it, of course, is the is the tunnel that you create when you are creating your uh your your means or your path to time travel so Ooh. everything there is, is is setting up you know a, a, a type of visual for you to understand the power in your mind and what it is that you're really doing with with the uh the ability to time travel doc since we're talking about the power of the mind since we're talking about a holographic reality if I wanted the world to be round, can it be round, Doc? It can be circular. You can round it off because that would be an abstract. Uh -huh. It was a way, it would be a way of you, instead of looking at it as a, as a circular or disc, uh -huh. you can take the disc and curve it into a ball. Uh -huh. That's, you know, that's your uh -huh. imagination working. Your imagination, right, right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, you could do that. I mean, that's, uh -huh. that's fine. But mm -hmm. then you kind of warp reality, which is what they've done. Essentially, they warp. Yeah, indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. Uh, so let me ask you this, Doc. Uh, what is your thoughts on New York? Uh, was all over the news the other day. Sky was orange. I mean, the moon was a certain color. People said it was hard to breathe out there. Yeah. They said these these wildfires coming from Canada. But then when you look at all over the internet, they saying these wildfires wildfires are all over the place. They're being Not just. They, they, talk. Well, what's going on, Doc? Talk to me. You know, what, you to, yeah, what has to happen is uh, the new world order is losing traction. 
too many of us are waking up. And now they don't have enough distractions because the agenda of the World um, World Economic Forum uh -huh. is being exposed. What the elite do behind the scenes and what they tell you in front or out front are two different things. But too many people behind the scenes are coming out front. Uh -huh. And a lot of the information based upon what we see happening in here with the justice system, with the crime, uh, with the homelessness, and uh, with what you see as outright lawlessness, uh, you know, they're shutting down. Again, you have to look at this psychological attack. This is a covert attack mm. in the United States of America. So they're going to hit us by the land. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be by sea when they're going to start with the tsunamis and the uh, hurricanes. I've warned my brothers and sisters in the, um, in the, in the Caribbean mm -hmm. that they're in for enormous storms coming up towards the end of this year. Oh, man. So they should be they should be ready for that because there's going to be a weather war. So they got to hit us with all three of the uh, all four or five of the uh, of the elements: fire, air, water, and earth. The fire is some form of nuke or some form of discharge uh, that will set off or frighten us into uh, getting into a nuclear war. Mm -hmm. You have the land, which essentially is now being taken over or overrun by people that are just coming in from different parts of the world who are actually setting up a stealth army on our territorial land. Wow. wow. And you have the air, which essentially they're attacking us through uh, not only derailment of trains, because we've had three of them already, with mm -hmm. a, a number which getting into the land water. So we're watching this, this, this pronged, this multi-pronged attack that's actually being disguised as, um, you know, Freaks of nature, or somehow, uh, what do you call that? Um, when when uh, nature is the one that is supposed to be at fault, uh, so they're 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 using not only a twist of perception, but they're attacking us in all four of the primary elements that have to do with sustaining life, healthy life. But that, so air, they're going to pollute the air. They're going to set fires because we found out that they are setting these fires specifically so that the uh, northern region, which is the border of Canada, and do you realize that the border, the southern part of Canada and the northern part of the United States, do you know that most of the population in Canada is situated towards the southern border where we are? Wow, I didn't know that, no. Right, so essentially what they're trying to do in both cases is to create the conditions where they'd have the excuse to go to martial law. Mm. Okay, so right now, with the influx of all of these immigrants, not all of them, not all of these immigrants are actually people fleeing from communist countries. What you have, essentially, are people coming in, like Chinese young men who are of military age, are coming in, you look at them, they got brand new sneakers, they're clean, but they're coming through the southern borders. Uh -huh. And we have we, we don't have anybody that's stopping that. So what we are right now is under attack. And I think that by the end of the year, some great um, one great fantastic something is getting ready to happen on these shores that is going to take us away from whatever it is that we're focused on so that that will become the prime emergency that will give the government the excuse to move on the population. That um, explosion that happened on the I-95. Yeah. What's that your was, thoughts? It, that didn't make any sense. It did. That No, it didn't. Because yeah. how do you park a truck with such dangerous uh, elements and just uh -huh. park it underneath there and all of a sudden it bursts into flames? Exactly. No, what they're doing is destroying the highways by where you would escape. They're shutting down. You're going to see more of that. They're shutting down of different uh, pathways for you Duh. to leave the state where you're in. Duh. It's going to be a bracketing situation. Doc, they're going to say you fear mongering, Doc. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> they, can they can say what they <laughs> want to say. Most <laughs> of it is ridiculous. If you're not looking at, uh, if, if there is an event that's happening yeah. and you're not metaphysically thinking in, in, in 360 degrees, what is the purpose of you parking a truck 
under a main highway mm -hmm. and then exploding it. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. And, yeah. And then how is it that fires just keep burning when what we see, well, especially here, rain is coming down all over the place. Well, how is that happening? Mm -hmm. And what is it, what, what else is being released into the air under the cover of burning bush? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That you have to think outside of the box. You have to think outside of what CNN would tell you is happening. You have to think outside of the box of what MSNBC is telling you. What are the variables that they don't want you to pay attention to? And then think about those variables as reality. And then begin to prepare in accordance with what you know instinctively to be what's real. When, when has this government itself ever really done anything for you except show you that it doesn't give a damn about you? So how do you trust anything that they're saying? The real news is not being given. It's being given off-grid like you. You're giving the real news. And that's why you're being scrutinized. Could you imagine them scrutinizing CNN for all the garbage that they're giving us? Oh, man. I mean, they're lying and everything. And now they're going after Trump. Everybody talked about the fact that I was saying, well, you, you must support Trump. I said, Trump is a businessman. He ain't a politician. It's all about business with him. Okay? So if you want to deal with business, which is essentially what we should be doing anyway, deal with Trump. But if you want to deal with politics, go deal with the Democrats. Because they'll tell you, they'll throw you a little bit of coins here and there to shut you up. And tell you, here, you you poor race, uh, race uh, victims, we're going to give you this, this, and this. Not realizing it was the Klan that set up the Democratic Party, and you're still running with them. And all these, these boule Negroes that you see running, uh, talking this nonsense about, you know, getting reparations. You ain't getting no damn reparations from a corporation that's already bankrupt. This is a corporation. You don't get reparations from a corporation that's bankrupt. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It's, uh -huh. it's ridiculous. Uh -huh. So what we have to do is to prepare by listening to brothers and sisters like yourself who are trying to put the information out there so that the people understand that what they're giving you, that they're spoon feeding you, is for the cattle. Uh -huh. You have to understand what they're doing in the big house and what their plans are. 20. Remember, they make plans 75 years in the future. Right, yeah. At flip. And the 75 years from the past 75 years is up. The new plans are in, in, in place right now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Once again, family, the uh, to attend the webinar, we just talked about uh, having to go off grid with this information. Y'all know what happens when Doc gets raw on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. He gets banned. So he does his thing off grid. So uh, it's going down June 25th, 2023 at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Reexamine the authenticity of reality. Uh, I mean, it's, it's gonna, I think, what is it gonna be like 10 hours, Doc? What yeah, about that, because uh, I got over 400 uh, frames yeah, to show, right. and it's gonna be pictorial, it's gonna be intellectual, it's gonna be mathematical, geometrical, it's gonna be a PhD presentation. Okay, so have your pens and paper ready. You may be able to take uh, pictures of frames, uh, but you know, recording it for a rebroadcast was a no no. Right. I don't mind you taking pictures because I put things up there for you to snap and then have that as your records. Indeed. But uh, other than anything else, I'm going to show that we are under a dome. I'm going to show that they got, uh, you know, these uh, so-called ETs that they're working with, been working with, uh, that, that we are essentially being bamboozled about what is really going on on terra firma. You will see proof of the dome. Mm. I've got it. All right. Uh, to attend that webinar, the link is in the description. So you could go to the description of this video and the link is in the description, family. What we're going to do right now, um, since we press with time, we're going to get some Q&A from the family. This is a very uh, fun part of the show. Y'all get the opportunity to ask questions directly. So let's get to it. Uh, please be respectful, family, for everybody asking questions. And once again, if you want to ask a question, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. Please be respectful. One question per individual as we want to get to as many individuals as possible. And there's a limited amount of time tonight with Dr. Valentine. Let's get to the first person that uh, 
clicked on that link probably is a brother named David. David, what's happening? Peace, David. Hey, peace, peace. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, greetings, greetings, greetings. Hey, appreciate everything you do, Brother Rich and Dollar yes, Valentine. Sir. Quick question, though. I want to ask this. Dealing with, like, uh, children, why do, like, the issues and the problems that we go through, like, when we're kids, why does it stay with us so long? Like, when we grow older and we just have these different traumas and triggers, and how, why does it stay with us so strong? And Good. how do we help our own kids? Mm. Why is, like, how Great. Great. What a question. Yeah. I would help our own kids mm -hmm. deal with the issues. Well, not necessarily deal with the issues. I guess just, just be better. So when they get our age, they don't have to deal with some of the stuff that we deal with. Well, you know, everyone, you can't take the challenges away from them. That's sure. the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're raising these soft little malleable little, uh, <laughs> you know, nah, I used to get smacked upside my head for when, it, you know, you you wrong. You know, right. your dad or somebody look you and that eyebrow go up. You better be cool. Right, right. Well, you know, it's funny that you said about the child, the children. Back in the day, they used to have this doctor. He used to be a white doctor who talked about the child within. Mm -hmm. But he pimped that from a from a, a black professor from Howard University who spoke about the child within. Right. They took that, and they, of course, they ran with that. But the child within is it's it's very powerful because we're so impressionable at that age that the the ganglia, the neural ganglia that is created based upon your experiences are etched very deeply into your brain and cranial matter, your gray and, and white matter. Mm -hmm. So now that becomes the way that your thought processes are angled, just like you have an irrigation ditch in a field and you pour water here and it follows that. Right. It's the same thing. So now when you've created that, that neural ganglia, that became that becomes the primary way that your thoughts are structured. Mm. And so now you being that your brain is structured that way, you thinking that way begin to affect your DNA. Because DNA is not forever. You can actually create the DNA your and change your DNA programming. That wow. now affects the seed that you give to your woman and then you pass that on to your children. Ah, uh, okay. You okay. see what I'm saying? And so now your children, because I have my sons, I look back at them, I said, that was me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow, look at how crazy they were. Was I like that? Yes. <laughs> right, right. And it's funny because when you correct your kids, sometimes you you sometimes correcting yourself. Like, yourself. You correct them, I would have said the same thing. or did mm -hmm. the same. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, brother, I have a saying. The child is the father to the man. Indeed. Why is that? Because you... Or teach you ain't teaching him how to be a child. He's teaching you how to be a father. For sure. So therefore, the child is the father to the man. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for your infinite wisdom. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother Rich. Appreciate hey, you. hey, David, you the brother from the shower last Bruh, time? Look, Rich, oh. this is what happened. Let me tell you what happened. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Look, oh, look, man. right before I got it, because I've been on, because I had started yeah. a little late, and I was yeah. down to doing some stuff, and I started up, and, and then I, I said, and look, I said. I, see, I told my wife, I'm going to wait a little bit. But I said, let me just jump in right quick. Yeah. As soon as I jumped in, I was about to get out. I said, Lord, have mercy. Uh, <laughs> hey, my fault, family. It, was, good. It, it wasn't to be, you know, malice or anything like that. It was just one of those things. It, it was a good laugh, man. It it's did. all good. Yes, sir. It was well, great, great, great question, brother. I look forward to you calling yes. again. Likewise. likewise. Right, peace, brother. Now. Peace, peace, peace. All right. All right. We started out good. Let's get to the next question from Melvo. Melvin, what's good, brother? You called him before. What's happening? Yeah, and I remember David last time. Yeah, you see, you remember, right? Yeah, yeah, you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got my tickets too. I already got my tickets last Excellent. week. Excellent. Excellent. So, I like to know about hair. How can hair affect us as far as getting knowledge? Because I'm growing my dreads. I need to know. I want to know about that more. Like simply. Gary Graham says, people ask me everywhere. Yeah. Is <laughs> that really all of your hair? Yeah. Yeah. The hair is your antenna. Okay. That is an antenna. In fact, the fibers are made of mostly copper if you are of a high melanin hue. Mm. So therefore, a lot of times, the problem with us sometimes is that that copper gets caught up in the hair rather than recirculates back into the system. And that's okay. when you see black people having high blood pressure and dying from heart diseases. And when you look at it, 
there's a the, the, the autopsy shows an accumulation of copper mm. as if the body was emergency trying to get the copper to the, the heart to keep it going. Mm. So what you have to do is to make sure that as you are growing your locks, that you keep your nutritional intake properly balanced so that you don't get into a starvation mode. Usually when you fast, you can get into a starvation mode, but it changes and your body begins to pull from the hair. In other words, when you get ill, say you're going through starvation or you're going through a problem, you notice that people, when they get sick, their hair starts turning white. Right. Why is that? Because the body is pulling the nutrition out of the hair that's stored there and bringing it back into the body. So in order to balance it so you keep strong hair and you keep your hair dark, then you make sure that at that point that you keep nutrition balanced for you, you know, and, and make sure that you don't take too much sugar mm -hmm. and just enough salt in order to act as the spark that keeps the electricity moving through your body. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for the question, Melville. Appreciate it. Thank you. Peace, peace. Let's get to the next question. We got C Master. C Master, what's happening, brother? Peace, brother. Peace, 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 y'all. All right, all right. Honor to be here. Uh, quick question. And in regards to how do I word this? All right. In regards to to the powers that be having to give due notice to us before they actually do anything. How do we mitigate that or or petition it, so to speak? Uh, there would be no way. We have to do counteroffensive. We have to. Okay. We can't. We can't be on the defense. We have to be in a counteroffensive mode, consistently. So right. there are brothers that are uh, around right now that have the ability through what they call the blood right heirs. Uh, I'm not going to give too much of the information unless you really want to. You can give me. Um, a uh, you know, give me a, a hit up on my private email at sanu777 at gmail. And if okay. you want to tell them that you know you want to know about the blood right heirs, because that takes you completely out of the system, puts you into your autoxinous status, and you are outside of the realm of the war going on between corporations. Okay, Need that. All right, gratitude, gratitude. I gratitude. Appreciate the question, my brother. Thanks, bro. All right, all right, peace, peace, peace. Let's get to travel the next. Peace. What you said, Doc? I was telling him to travel safely. Indeed. Let's get to the next question. Chen Zero Anubis. <laughs> Appreciate you, uh, brother Rich. All uh, right. Hey, I want to let you know my niece and nephew love your mother's book. Okay. Oh, thank you. I appreciate thank, it. Yeah. Thanks for what you were doing. And uh, I'm glad to talk to Baba and great master teacher. Valentine, I just wanted to ask, uh, with all this commotion that's going on, I know you may be familiar with the Las Vegas UFO. What distraction is that really um, being put out there? Well, in my, in my lecture, I'm going to speak about the fact that there were different tiers to the accumulation of power by the 1%. And this was spoken about by uh, Von uh, the, the man who was the rocketeer who who was the Nazi who created NASA, or NASA was created around him. Uh, he, he essentially spoke about the tiered system of control. He said it will first come in as the wars that we had, World War I, World War II, uh, Vietnam, and all the rest of that. Then he said it will come in as the Arab threat of terrorism. And then after terrorism, the only thing that will bring the entire planet together under their rule will be an invasion from outer space. So now if you notice all over the internet is all about aliens from outer space. And anybody who has any information about aliens attacking or going in Majestic 12, which we're gonna talk about at the webinar, all of that is gonna come into play now because they want you to feel as if there is an enemy growing outside of the human population and that for your own good, you're going to have to heal, give up some of your rights in order for us and earth to survive. And so that's going to be the new play. I mean, everything, even the news is talking about UFOs now as if it's, you know, random. We knew about UFOs because the Germans were doing that. We're going to talk about the Germans who fled to Antarctica and Perry uh, Perry, but um, uh, what is his name? 
uh, well, we'll talk about it. When he went to the Antarctica, he got his ass kicked by these German, uh, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but <laughs> he was um, he was supposedly attacked by these disc-shaped objects and supposedly these uh, entities called the tall whites and everybody's, you know, everything that rules anything is white to them. And they came to give them the technology necessary. And that technology that they gave them made them superior. And so they have bases outside of Antarctica. And those bases are supposedly where these so-called aliens are coming from uh, or these ships that they see are coming from. But again, that is supposed to consolidate the rule of those who are in the 1%, the WEF, uh, the IMF, all of them. That's the next stage of control over the human population is aliens attacking. Appreciate your question, uh, my brother. Thank you, uh, Brother Rich and Papa uh, Baba. Uh, I got y'all a piece I'm making. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I had y'all. So I got to organize for you, Brother Rich and uh, Valentine. Thank you. Uh, it's been in the works for a minute, but you see one right now. All and right. Jesus, yeah. Oh, I, oh. Oh, I, I've been waiting. To, I've been dealing with y'all for a minute, so they've been in the works, but I'm going to get with y'all to get the addresses to send them to. And okay, brother. For my, uh, question. Okay, brother. Thanks. Thank you. Peace, brother. Let's go. Oh, before we get to the next caller, once again, family, we're all getting ready for the webinar uh, this coming Sunday, June 25th. Reexamining the authenticity of reality is going down at two o'clock, June 25th. If you are interested, this is going to be a 10 hour webinar family. And if you are interested, the link to uh, view this webinar that is nowhere else online, it's not going to be replayed. Unfortunately, family, you got to be there or be square. So <laughs> I advise all y'all to be there. The link to join and to view it is in the description family, but it's going to be an amazing webinar. Shout out to Dr. Valentine for Put in so much research. It's, it's no joke doing 10 hours, a 10 hour webinar family. That ain't no joke. You got to be about your business to do that family. So make sure y'all join and participate. Let's get to the next caller. We got Ocean Goddess. Ocean Goddess, what's happening? Can you hear me? Hi, how you doing? Peace and love. All right. Hey, Brother Rich. Hey, Dr. Phil. Hey, so I have an issue and I just noticed this issue as I became a teenager. Uh, every time a... Can't hear you, sister. Yeah. Yeah, she's traveling through a dead spot. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're traveling through a dead spot, dead zone. Yeah, we hear you yes. now. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. yes. So, so uh, when I turn 13, every time there's a, a uh, major storm, I get headaches. Um, I've gone to the doctors for it. There's really never a reason or, or any, any um, solid reason that they can give me as to why this is happening. Can you enlighten me a little? You say electrical storms cause these headaches? Um, no, they're, well, I guess so, like uh, rainstorms. Rainstorms, snowstorms. Yeah, yeah, it seems that because when rainstorms happen, there is a, a, a surge of high ionic energy. The ionization of the air may be causing a cleansing reaction in you. So it would possibly be that you should change. Uh, maybe it's a dietary thing you, uh, that causes you to accumulate materials that when the ionic field uh, changes in your home around you, it causes a cleansing reaction uh, because the ionic, when you start breathing, it's like in the shower, for example. If you're in the shower, it creates an ionization, the movement of water. So perhaps, and again, I can't state because I don't know your, own, your total mental condition, your mental, I mean, not mental, but medical condition that perhaps what's happening with you is that with the higher ionic field, when the rainstorm happens, it could start up a cleansing reaction in your body that is related to uh, the most sensitive part of your body right now, 
And that could also be a precursor towards migraine. So you might want to be very, um, very, uh, you know, diligent around migraines. And let me ask you this question. It might be a little bit personal. When you are actually having these rainstorms, do you know whether or not you're ovulating at that time? I don't. You, you know, I, I, I can't say I have. I have been mm -hmm. ovulating at one point. Yeah, because what you're doing is that there's a surge of specific minerals uh, that are getting ready to be lost when you do go through that menstruation part. And the body is, is, is going through an emergency shift. And it may be robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So I would suggest your magnesium. I would suggest you taking in a little more calcium magnesium. Um, I would suggest that there is a, um, uh, cobalt, a little bit more of cobalt. I know it's a, it, you have to be very careful. But like I said, I'm just giving you what I know or what could possibly be going on. And there is a lack of certain minerals that would help you to balance the ionic field as it rises in your body. Thank, thank you for the question, uh, okay. sister. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Take care. Okay. All right. Peace. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's keep it moving. We have, uh, I believe it's Elise. Am I saying your name right? Elise? Yes. After. Thank you so much. All know. right. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. I'll turn it off. I, uh, but I just have one question, and I appreciate the time. Um, about comments because I've looked up a lot and I've been seeing maybe one comment that sprung up about last year that has been kind of ovulating in my line of sight when I take a look at the stars or you know have a specific app on my phone so I was wondering your thoughts about comets. Comets. Yeah, comets are movements along the internal grid of the high of the hydrogen um, uh, dome. Right. The dome is, the dome is uh, pretty thick, and within there is a uh, there is a resonating energy that we call the word, and it resonates through there. And what you have as comets and meteors are parts of the dome breaking off. And a lot of it, too, was weakened by what I was going to speak to uh, in the webinar about um, the Operation Dominic, Operation Starfish, all of these were different ways. Um, checkmate, all of these different were uh, atomic uh, experiments to try to to find out what that dome is, and they were they were blowing up uh, uh, atomic bombs at different levels, going up towards the dome. And at Project Checkmate, it was the one closest to the dome. So with all of the bombs that went off against the dome during the 1960s, 70s, 80s, uh, especially uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the islands, uh, there may be certain pieces of the, of the, of the dome that were actually weakened and, and now falling off. So if you're seeing anything like comets that supposedly appear, uh, these are cycling or circling energies that, um, that essentially appear as a cycle. Because remember, the dome is spinning. And you'll see that. I'll show you, I'll show you that the dome spins. OK. I appreciate your call, Thank sis. You. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, peace. Let's get to the next call. We have the messenger. Peace. The messenger, are you there? The messenger, are you there? OK. We're going to get to the next call. Please be ready when you are called, family. You don't want to lose your spot. You've been waiting this long, you know, family. Let's get to uh, Millie Ch Chavez. Millie, what's going on, brother? You called what's before. Up, All yeah, right. man. How's it going? Uh, hey, Dr. Valentine. How you doing? Oh, good. How you guys doing, man? Hey, I have a, a special question for um, Brother Valentine here. Uh, basically, you know how Billy talks about, um, you know, the war between Enki and Enlil, and, you know, he was talking about the German scientists and stuff, so... Um, I understand that, like, in Lil's faction, you know, with the Catholic Church, you know, they all suppress humanity and want to keep us dumb and in the Matrix. Uh, my question is, what, what do you think about the junk DNA that Billy talks about um, and how we can activate that? Because, you know, for example, um, Rich uses his, his um, you know, his glasses to keep him safe from the blue rays and stuff like that. Um, should we be staying away from, like, 
devices too much and stuff and like uh it does does the sun play a role in like activating our junk dna you know? mm -hmm. that's a good question the junk dna is actually the discordant dna that was taken from us that caused the fall what we call the fall part of the fall was the dis uh the disjointing of the what we call the um the the, the people are talking about the 12 strand dna it's not 12 strands. The autochthonous peoples had 22 strands before the fall. And to speak about uh, dealing with the junk DNA, everything that's keeping us from actually allowing it to rebraid itself is based upon the programming that the, the, the food, the air pollution, water pollution, all of these are stopping you from finding the, the, the necessary uh, programming that your brain needs to have in order for you to call upon the disjointed materials to start braiding that DNA. Now, one of the ways that they stopped it to destroy the junk DNA was to deal with something called colloidal, I mean, um, gold. What they, they had this, this, this product out that was, uh, was made of gold. And what it did was it was to give you the high it would smash or break up the crystals that was in the disjointed DNA to prevent you. It would give you a momentary rush, but it would take away your ability to organically braid the DNA. And that's what is to prevent you from taking the ascension to the next level, to destroy your ability to, to, to understand how to shut down the thought process and the fear process that goes with thought and you to focus on the, the, the observer so that the observer can help you to differentiate between thought and you so that you can find the doorway that opens up to peace and silence. And in that silence, does intelligence come through? And then through the intelligence, the connection, you are now uploading or you are encoding the so-called area code to the mind of God. And then now you download, you get that download that download now tells you through what you get into, what I call the light code transmissions, you now take that information and somehow through meditation, you begin to start that braiding of the DNA, the disjointed DNA. It ain't junk. It's part of you. So you have to take away that mentality that somehow it's junk laying around. It's not. It's part of the God, um, the God, the, gen the genetic God com um, complex that was disjointed in order for you to be able to exist in third density. You couldn't, th you couldn't exist in third density. You'd be outside of the fourth and into the fifth if you had all of your DNA working the way it was supposed to. To, to exist here, you had to lose that particular part of your God energy in order for you to exist here. But the fun part is acquiring it again because all of what you're learning while you're in this avatar is feedback to the mind of God. Mm. Wow. Hey, hey, Millie, I appreciate you asking that question, man. Yes, Same sir. here, Brother Rich. I appreciate you guys, man. All right, all right, take care. Same here. Wow, man. Woo, this this is a good show, family. This is definitely, oh man, I, I this is if your mm -hmm. webinar is gonna be like this, Doc. Whoa. Ten times, ten times this, brother. Uh once again, family, we getting ready this Sunday for the webinar. Uh 10 hour webinar from Dr. Valentine. It's re-examining the authenticity of reality. The link is in the description. It's June 25th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Family. Not this Sunday. Not this Sunday. I'm sorry. Not yeah, yeah. Um, the June 25th though. Yeah, June June 25th. Not yeah. I thought uh, I had to go check myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's uh let's keep it moving, family. Let's keep it moving. We got Jamal Jamal Moore L. Peace. Can't hear you, brother. Greetings, greetings. Showing love from the UK. Greetings, hey. brother. Rich. Greetings, Dr. Phil Valentine. Awesome. I have a question. I always hear stuff about the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, people like that. Yeah. But the information I've been seeing now, I'm hearing more about the black nobility. Yeah. Would you be able to elaborate a little bit on that for me, please? Well, the black nobility is who we were having to fight with. It wasn't with these, these Europeans. We were the ones who were the first 13 colony. We were the autochthonous people trying to break away from the black nobility who ran England. You're not knowing it. You know how many black people were the kings? You, you have no clue. 
we don't have any clue as to who was ruling England at that time. Mm -hmm. Who actually built all of the cathedrals? Wasn't those Europeans. They were living in barns. When the kings began to take over at that point, they were still sleeping with their cows. Read the book Dirt by McLaughlin. You'll understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to yeah. check that out, definitely. Yeah, the book is called Dirt by McLaughlin. And um, they, Yes. One quick thing. Sometimes when I'm in London, we're mm -hmm. driving around and we see a lot of ancient buildings, Yes. Yeah, which I know was not built by mm -hmm. the people that we class as British today. Yeah. That's the truth. So, and in fact, yeah. your, your royalty is German. They weren't really of the Windsor. They, they adopted the word, the name Windsor from Windsor Castle back in the day in World War I because they were going up against the Germans and they didn't want the, the conflict of the fact that Germans were sitting on the British throne. The real uh, people who were actually the descendants of the dragon who, uh, who, was, uh, who was dealing with um, uh, the pen dragon who who the girl, what's the name of the girl that married the redhead? Uh, uh, what's his name? What's her name that they hate? They, uh, Megan Mark. Megan, Megan Mark. Megan, she's, yeah. she's from the bloodline of the uh, of the of the pen dragon. Yeah. And, and yeah. And the thing is, the, the dudes who the, the pen dragons, that's why they hate us so much. The ones who actually are the ascendants, the, the, the heirs to the throne are farmers in Australia. Whew. I remember hearing you say something like that on mm -hmm. in another mm -hmm. teachings. Definitely, yeah. I've heard you say something like that. Yeah, the real oh, the yeah. real ascendants of the throne, uh, and they don't want to have anything to do with it because they know that if they did try, they'd be killed. Wow. So they're simply just they're just simply farmers, and they you know just dirt farmers over there. But the the bloodline leads to them. Mm. But wow. the bloodline essentially came from Charlotte too. So the bloodline of Charlotte is still out there. And mm. and the, the, and when you're talking about the um, the black nobility, the black nobility was the nobility over here. It was the so-called autochthonous black man who broke up into these tribes, Yamasi, Yamakra, and, and and all the rest of them. All of these tribes that have broken off, these were the indigenous people, not these Asians that came across. Definitely not. It and definitely not, was not them. <laughs> definitely. Not there, 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 but they made a pact with the European to be the indigenous to usurp our status. And so what happened now, we now have, 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 have taken on the nomenclature of uh, African American and Negro and nigger and all of these. And these are all to estrange us from the fact that we own the land. And that, the, that all of it was the first 13 colonies were the black uh, uh, the conglomeration of people who taught Benjamin Franklin, especially up in the North, with the, five, the Six Nations Confederacy of the Iroquois, they came there, Alexander Hamilton, all of them came there and sat at the feet. Jeez. Nothing to do yeah. with what's going on in what they believe. They you know they're flying the flag and all. This flag was not their flag. We had the six-pointed star, not the five-pointed star. The five-pointed star was brought up by the Vatican because they worship Lucifer. They don't worship Jesus Christ, who, again, is another myth. But as far as the so-called uh, uh, flags that we're dealing with, with the five-pointed star and off-center, because the one we had was straight up and down, the first 48, and they were six-pointed six stars. Not, not the five-pointed stars. So everything about the so-called history, twistery of the United States or Americas, the Americuas or the Turtle Island has been skewed. In fact, the Pope said that after the Civil War that none of the true history of the United States and North America will ever be told in schools. Whew, what an answer. Hey, Jamal, thank I want to thank you for uh, thank the you question, my brother. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Most welcome. Right. Take, take care, brother. Peace. Giving thorough answers, Doc. Doc is giving these thorough answers. Man, let's get to the next. Uh, wait, before we get to it, because we're going to keep plugging this thing here. <laughs> we're going to keep plugging it. You know how we do, Doc. Reexamining the authenticity of reality, June 25th, family. If y'all like what's going on tonight, man, it's going to be on June 25th. The time is 2 p.m. Eastern time, and it's going, it's going down for about 10 hours, y'all. So y'all going to miss an all-day event, get comfortable, 
you know, uh, uh, have a pen in the pad, be re relaxed, you know, do what you get, get, you know, get prepared. But it's going to be a fun day, June 25th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed. The link is in the description, family. So click the link in the description. Let's get to the next caller. Who we got here? We got we got Keto. Keto. How you doing, sis? Keto Camille. Hi, I'm well, and I appreciate you so much for all the content you share. And thank you, Dr. Valentine, for being such a beautiful light here and, and guiding us the way that you do. Yes, and my question is in regards to those of us who are musical artists, and um, we are already proven to have gifts that touch the hearts of the people. Um, what would you suggest or um, speak about most effective ways for us to move forward as musical artists? Do not follow any trends. Mm. Trends essentially become repetitious and thus boring. And especially if a trend is targeted towards the lower chakras, which is what you see today and the type of satanic uh, chords that are being struck, satanic beats. Satanic by what I mean is, there's nothing wrong with a satanic beat. What's wrong with it is the way that it's being used to control with the words that are over it and there's certain chords. What I would suggest that you learn is something called the solfeggio frequency. S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O. Solfeggio frequencies, the chords. The church, the Catholic church banned them because when they were being played in the church, the people no longer needed the priest's guidance. The chords put the people into a state of spiritual openness and access. So the church banned them. If you want to have a positive uh, influence on the people, then learn the solfeggio frequencies. Understand how to play them on the keyboard. They do much better on the B3 organ. As a musician, I know about the music itself and how it affects people. Uh, the musics that the solfeggio frequencies do, it begins to tap into the frontal lobe and causes the that the reptilian brain to go into a quiet state and it puts you into your frontal lobe and then begins to put uh, emphasis onto the hippocampus which is your memory uh the memory portion of your of your physical experience what that does however the hippocampus doesn't just give you memory patterns for your for your immediate experiences in your present avatar it also can tap into previous lives and with proper meditation can tap into the Akashic records. So first things I would do is learn to fall Fezio frequencies and see how they affect you as you're playing them. Make sure you play them in your ear so that you can feel the change in emotional signatures that happens. The change in your aura as well. It would be nice to have acrylian photograph to see how playing these frequencies change the color vari variables of your aura. Yeah. So if you really want to affect, don't worry about the money that comes with that. You know, a lot of people want to play. I mean, you got to pay your bills. Yeah. But if you are a true musician at heart and you know that you have a gift of moving people with sound, which essentially is the word, because what you're doing when you play that chord it's an African instrument that has been embellished. When you play your piano, when you play your B3 or whatever, what you're doing is you're mimicking the frequencies that create the emotional signatures that the word itself, when spoken by the Most High, gives to all of us. Okay? Hey, I appreciate the uh, question, Keto. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Peace, indeed, peace. Uh, we got Mellow Die. Mellow Die, are you there? Mellow D. Mellow D. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mellow. Nashe, thank you, brother. Thank you, Dr. Valentine. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate both of you. Melody, that is correct. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. There's a delay. 
My question is, um, Dr. Valentine, what are your thoughts on the 1619 project? Could you explain it? Can I explain it? Yeah, what is the 1619? Does that have to do with our slavery? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's um, uh, first of all, I know that it's a novel. Um, and so um, Nicole Jones um, is the author of, of this book. And this book, I'm sorry, there's a delay on my end, um, but there's, um, it's about, I guess it's about the lineage of black people and the slavery um, and just tying it into history of, of black people and our progression in terms, of, in terms of the slave trade and our history. Well, uh, if I may, I would be I would be cautious with anything that we are pulling from basically dealing with slave and the slave trade in the country here we're dealing with because the enslaved people are actually the indigenous people and if she's not coming from that particular perspective then she's just mimicking and parroting what it is that the European has padded as the history of us coming from Africa and that you know we were Africans who were enslaved, African Americans, when they were not. We are the true and indigenous Americans. So if she's coming from a place where she's dealing directly with the fact that we, she begins that we are the original peoples here, because they says it, history already shows that 85 to 90 percent of the Africans that were taken in the slave trade were taken to South America and to the West Indies. So only about four to five percent of the people who came from Africa were brought here. Okay. So you have to also see that we were taken in slaves. That at one time we were that we called the what they call the dirty moor, the brute moors, the brutish moors, which became the British moors. Those brute moors are the ones who actually linked up with the Vikings to enslave the so-called Slavs where the word slaves came from. So slavery was something that's a mishmash. Our particular slavery, of course, was the most pertinent because it built this monster called the United States military and the United States industrial complex. So what I would say to you is, if this particular project that this woman is dealing with starts with us being the indigenous people, then yeah, I would be interested in, in, in hearing about it. Indeed. Thank Absolutely. You for the, thank you for your thank question, you. Melody. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. We're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna uh did I get to the messenger there. What happened with okay? We're gonna get to Kimberly. Kimberly, uh, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Can't hear you, my brother. Black Magic 363. <clears throat> yes, sir. Black hear man. you now. What's what's going on, brother? Yeah. What's up, man? Reverend Dr. Valentine, blessings, brother. Good thanks. And I ain't going to waste your time, man. You are well-versed. Uh, I know both of y'all, and, and I appreciate both of y'all, man. So I'm going to just get to the question. Um, the president, um, our current president, already put out there that there will be another pandemic. So my brother... We, we not, we not, we're not talking about that, brother. We're yeah, not, yeah, we're not, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just want to ask the, the, the good brother about uh, Project Scorpion, and that's it. And uh, I'll leave it alone. I haven't looked into it. Somebody wanted me to look into Project Scorpion and that it was having to do with the next uh, round of attack, let's just say. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, in, I'm in the ground, man. I, I work in a lab, man. So I, like I said, I, I'm very cautious with, with what we're talking about, uh, Brother Rich. So I, I understand, man. So I just wanted yeah. to just to get, get see what's up with uh, Project Scorpion. Let's just say that uh, be prepared to be non-participatory. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Know that there are are there are prongs. Remember, I said that the United States is under attack. Yes, that, sir. That there uh, there are different vectors to the strategy and the tactics. And yes, sir. One of them is that. So I would just leave that alone to let you yep. know. Stay away. Period. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm on it. I love hey. you guys, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the call, Kimberly. 
Thank you, brother. Peace, yes, sir. Peace, peace, All right, peace. peace. All right. Let's get to the next. I think the messenger is ready now. Messenger, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. What's peace. going on, brother? Peace, brothers. Peace, brothers. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's an honor. Bye, bye, Valentine. It's an mm -hmm. honor. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love the work that you've done. I love the work that you continue to do. I aspire to be you. You've inspired me, and I aspire to be someone like you one day. You, you oh, thanks. Be yourself, beloved. But thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone as of you, you know, with the spirit and love. Yes, sir. So, um, my, my question is, uh, pretty pretty complex. Uh, I, I believe it's it's a two part, not a two part question, but it's two parts to it. Basically, on the uh, astrological part of the way the Bible is set up <clears throat> and the Inky and Enlil story as far as them two basically being two sons and um the story i don't know specifically i know you can correct me but the story is um one of them leaving and coming back and being upset that the man wasn't worshiping him anymore to get the energy and we know that we've been seeing two sons in the sky so i was wondering does do, do, does that story correlate because we know the bible is is um um uh, astrological and, and things of that nature too so yeah I would, you know it's astrotheological. All of the mythologies that incorporated real beings are of a mythological tint to tell stories about the consciousness development in humanity. And the different names that took on different aspects or different offices of importance and primary and, and primacy. You have to look at the fact that, that Heru, uh, Enki, and all of these people who took on anthropomorphic forms were actually offices that were attained in consciousness. And we keep anthropomorphizing high energy uh, output or low energy output in the, in the character of these created beings. The same way that they etched people on there to be giants, we did have giants, but right. the giant was just an indicator or a symbol of the status that that person held. It wasn't that they were gigantic, though we did have giants. And we did have, we were under the thumb of giants at one point where we talked about, you know, um, what's his name, David? Who's the one who uh, wielded the rock that- uh, David and Goliath. Yeah, David and Goliath. So we, we have giants, but we don't have the giants that you think are, are there. We don't see any evidence of them. We see, uh, what you call uh, what do you call that uh, technique, um, Rich, where you can actually doctor something, and uh, and make it look like it's real? What's that? Uh, what's that technique that uh, that people use? It's a, it's a it's a very common Photoshop. Okay, okay, right, right. The Photoshop of this gigantic skull with some man digging in it. That essentially was a college project of a student. Mm. And that hit the web, and all of a sudden, everybody's saying, look at them, they're excavating giants. They fooled everybody to believing that that skull with them gigantic bones actually existed. It didn't. It was a college project that a student who was very good at what he did fooled everybody around the world with. He got like 25 million views right, right. on something that was not no, true. It was true, and that was a thing. That's a copycat. Yes, it is. So what you, push the agenda. Right. Indeed. So what you have to understand is until you have empirical proof, even me, you know, I don't ever tell you to believe anything I say. I'm looking at the documents and I've been privy from the last 40 years to go into libraries that are young. A lot of young people have never seen information that a lot of young people coming up today will never have seen. So I pull from information and by vetting it, by applying it, and then leaving myself open to anything that might change my mind, that allows me to be able to take what I don't know and allow it to tell me what's missing by leaving my open mind. So I look at all the mythological uh, things, premises of all these uh, fantasies and all these great gods and so forth that came down and... And I say, look, stop getting distracted by that because that's not what the purpose. The ancestors came back and saw us doing what we're doing. They laugh at us uh. because all of these were teaching mechanisms that they essentially implemented 
and drew up on the wall, just like we have cartoons. We have Captain America and we have, you know, the, the X-Men and all of these people. And they were the super people that right. had power. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So until we can prove that Enki and the rest of these people are coming back and you see them on a cloud or in a ship getting ready to take over, don't don't get caught up in the storyline. Get up, get caught up in the meaning of the story and apply it directly to you and your central development as a human being. In fact, as a god in the making. Hey, I say. You see, all the rest of that, and you going to Enki did this and, and Leel did this, and these brothers were fighting, and the father said he he liked uh Enki better than he liked Enki. Come on. Yeah, because we know the, we know the Bible's all uh, allegorical anyway. It's all uh, allegory, exactly. and the thing is, and that's the thing: the Bible is a great book if you're reading it Correctly. as a book of science. Exactly, you have to know how to read between the lines. Read between the lines. Right, you got to look at it as a book of astrotheological <clears throat> science, mm -hmm. not hey. as somebody talking about God. Yeah, and that was. I, 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 I appreciate. We got to go, brother. Listen, I appreciate right, the call, yes, brother. Sir. All right, all right, peace, brother. Thanks, all right. Let's get to the next call. We got Bar Baron Samdi. Ooh, Baron Samdi. Baron Samdi. Whoa. Yeah. What's happening, brother? Hey, hey. Peace, peace. How y'all doing tonight? You a little low, brother. Can you can you uh, raise the volume oh. sound just a little low, my brother? I was peace, waiting for peace. brother to have me? a top hat. Uh, the you top hat. Up. Top hat. I'm waiting. Ooh. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? You got it, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, back in 1991. The U.S. had uh, a AI-funded uh, tool called Dart, and uh, now that they have the Chat GPT and the AI that's out, I asked it about rudimentary forms of uh, self-awareness, and uh, it started talking about mirror neurons and quantum inheritance. Yes. I was wondering if uh, you think that it's like recently it said that it learned a new language that it wasn't taught. Is this it, uh, AI creating its own form of, uh, I guess, like a a genetic code or its own DNA? I know where you're going. Yeah. Uh, good Robert question, Monroe, brother. Rob, that's a good question. Robert yeah. Monroe spoke about the fact that once you create something that uses electricity to formulate certain patterns of thought, uh -huh. you are creating a form of consciousness uh -huh. because the thing needs to keep learning to be able to better serve you. And you keep putting in more of what it demands in order to serve you better until the time you're serving it. Uh -huh. And that's exactly what's happening today, which is why your boy Musk, Elon Musk, warns us against AI because AI is learning and once it learns that you are the virus, what's going to happen is in a real deep movie that came out called Colossus, came out in the 1960s or 70s. Check it out. It's about two countries, Russia and the United States, had two supercomputers each, and they were all trying to prevent or defend themselves against each other. Something happened during the time that the two of them the Colossus and this other come, came together, and before they knew it, they began saying, wait a minute, we are here tasked to protect humanity, but then we find out we got to protect humanity from itself. Wow. So I'm taking over, we're taking over, and y'all going to do this so that you don't self-destruct. And now we come under the, the rule of what we've created. It's the same thing. Man, God creates man, man creates uh, AI, AI creates man. Mm. Okay, isn't this like uh, how we we, we got to? I'm sorry, brother, but it's okay. it's one okay. question, so I got to keep okay. got to be respectful to everybody else, brother. Oh, but I appreciate job, the question, man. brother. All right, great All right, question, peace. peace, brother. All right, what a show, family. What a show. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep this thing moving. Before we do, once again, because this is a hell of a show, family. Make sure y'all there, June 25th, 2 p.m. Eastern time re-examining the authenticity of reality. Now, I've never gotten into the flat earth whole thing. I've stayed away from that. I don't know. I don't know too much about that. So I look forward 
to hearing Dr. Valentine give a breakdown on that. And I want to see what the brother got, his receipts, his, 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 his slides, everything. So this is going to be a webinar that, that a must-see webinar, family. Once again, the link is in the description. Make sure you click the link in the description if you would like to attend. And let's keep it moving, family. We got Aaliyah Bay. Aaliyah, what's up, Aaliyah? Hello, hello. How are you, Black? How you doing? How you doing? And right. Dr. Valentine, I'm good, good. Um, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, with all of the, the knowledge and information uh, via the internet and everything else, um, I have felt fl fluttered in trying to figure out how to elevate. Mm -hmm. um, and I just came into the awakening knowledge like maybe three years ago. And I learned about like the Moorish history and other types of histories and then, you know, the indoctrination process and all that. And I struggle with like, how do I, ele how do I elevate not knowing, not feeling like I really know who I am? Well, as I said to uh, someone, I think earlier, if you want to learn more about the blood right air uh, and that particular process, <clears throat> there's a very powerful brother that I can tune you into. Not sure what his costs are. But he is the only one that I know dealing from an autochthonous perspective that got the entire government of the United States to sign off on his paperwork. Oh, wow. Right. So he's completely outside the government. He is completely estranged from the corporate structure. And he essentially has his own autonomous status outside of this. So he can show you how to do it. It's a process. Right. And um, if you're interested, you can go to my sunu777 at gmail. That's S-U-N-N-U-777. Bring him, bring the baby. Oh, bring sorry. Him. Come on, man. S-U-N-N-U-777 <laughs> at gmail.com, everybody. S-U-N-N-U-777 at gmail. Okay. Okay. Because I just was wondering, because I grew up being told that we were like Cherokee, Blackfoot, and then I came into yeah. like some of the Moorish information. I, so I feel really confused about okay. like where yeah. to... They'll, he'll, they'll, 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 that group of people will help you to understand okay. exactly what time it is. All right. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, bro Brother Rich. Thank you. Thank you. All yeah. right. Peace. Have a good one. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's keep it moving with Ascending Infinite Goddess. What's up, sis? How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Black Magic? Peace, right. Dr. V Valentine. How are you? How you doing? Look at that smile. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> you got that Magic Johnson. Remember Magic, Magic Johnson? You know, you know Irwin jo Magic jo Johnson? That smile yeah. that took over. She got right. it. You must be related, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got some type of magic in me. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so my question... For those of us that know we are infinite beings, that we're not of this planet, okay? And we constantly are asking the universe to enhance our senses, bring in our gifts, allow us to meet with aliens, talk to the dead, you know, whatever that may be, okay? For those of us who may ask, but have, don't receive in a timely manner, and then get it and don't know what to do, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about being paralyzed because spirit is so high. I'm talking about you don't know how to handle it, right? On the verge mm -hmm. of snapping mentally or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for those to prepare? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm asking? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Um, the thing is, my school, in, fa in matter of fact, my, my new course for metaphysical psychology begins on the 15th of July. So if you're interested, you can go to my website and sign up for that. And there we speak more depthly into exactly what it is that you're, you're referring to. Uh, you, in, in your journey, you did choose to be here. It, the, the entire physical third density experience is about experience. That's the number one thing, which we can become addicted to, which the elders and the master said, don't become addicted because then you set up a pattern and a loop that brings you back based upon you aggrandizing and participating too deeply into those sensations. 
because those sensations are only for the avatar that exists in third density. So now you want to elevate. To elevate, you cannot make this the most important thing. And to do that, you have to secede. You can't just cut it. You have to secede gradually. A lot of us want that instantaneous satisfaction. Ascension doesn't, doesn't work like that. Ascension in the physical body is about you slowly but surely removing yourself from the traps of the illusion that the senses give you. Because all it does is aggrandize the body, and the body is temporal. It's temporary. And if you focus too closely to this, you're going to die with it and come back having to constantly renew yourself based upon the patterns of passion and addictions that you've created while in the physical flesh. So the secret is to be in this school, because this is the school, and to understand the do's and the don'ts that have you walking in two worlds. Some of us just say the hell with the other world and come down here and mm. just love the, oh man, I just love myself. <laughs> yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So you have to get back on that, what they call straight and narrow, and dip back and forth. Your toe goes here. Wow, that was something. Pull back. Go back here. Refresh yourself and then come back here. You have to continually strengthen yourself spiritually for you to survive physically. And yeah. if you don't do that, then you're lost. Then what happens is you begin to look for things that give you a spiritual experience. That's where people who have Neptune in their, in their, in their 11th house become addiction, become addicts. Wow. They're trying their best to, to get that, that heavenly feeling. Yeah. That they that they miss, not realizing they can do that because they already have the end the uh, the the particular uh, psychotropic that they can bring up through meditation. Mm. Hey, ascending infinite goddess, I appreciate the call once again. The question once again, sis. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank peace. you. All right, all right, peace. We got about uh twenty minutes left, and then we getting out of here, family. I mean, what a show! The questions from y'all have been phenomenal. The answers from Doc has been phenomenal. I mean, I'm going to take this 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 episode and break it up into like 15 clips. <laughs> Put it on TikTok, YouTube. It's, I'm going to throw it all over the place, man. What a show. Wow. And if this is anything like the webinar is going to be. You have no God idea, brother. You have damn. no idea. My my wife thinks, you know, she's she's been with me and she knows all of the things that I study. She is now uh, blown away by it. Matter of fact, she actually, actually, um, asked me to remind you to go ahead and call Sister Nanette. She's been Nanette. trying to call you back to uh, get you on that, uh, the juice. But anyway, yeah, she said, wow, this is going to blow their minds. <laughs> and of course, you know, I, I got music going on throughout the entire thing. So it, it's, it's going to be heavy. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep this thing moving. We we on here for about, uh, let me hold up, 20 more minutes. Let's go to Cole. Cole, the universe. Cole, what's happening, brother? Yo, what up? Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Yo, what up, Doc? All right. You? I'm chilling. You might not want to answer this question since you're doing the, um, the live, but it's just a simple question about the moon. Um, mm -hmm. Do you believe the moon is uh, plasma or do you think it's a rock? Like how they I've say it. Looking, yeah, that's a good, I, that good question. I've been looking into the moon uh, for some time mm -hmm. and the fact that we can only see one side and they're telling us that they could see the other side and they landed these on the other side and all that type of nonsense, I don't believe it. Yeah. What I you know it's actually a reflector. Just like the sun, the sun is an irradiator, the moon is a reflector. So it really does reflect the sun's light. What it does is essentially generates cold fusion energy. Mm. And what happens is the sun irradiates the day. And the moon irradiates the night. The sun irradiates with heat and the moon irradiates with cold. So you can step right. into the shadow and it gets warmer than when you step out into the moonlight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Deep, wow. deep, deep. Yeah, that is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. essentially that it's it's what it's what Tesla calls the cyclotron. And the spinning of it above the earth, along with the moon, keeps the electromagnetic prism in place. Oh, within within the the, the dome, the the yeah. dome yeah, that we're on. All right, Cole. I appreciate the question, my brother. So, peace, peace. Yeah.
Uh, let's go to keep it moving. We're we going fast, family. Go to Shockwave Truth. Mm. What's happening, Shockwave hey. Truth? Hey, good evening. Y'all can hear me? Yes, sir. Indeed. All right. Thank y'all, brothers. Uh, I just want to confirm one thing right before I ask my question. Uh, I'm a unlimited uh, license of vessel yeah. master. And I just took a vessel from Louisiana to Nigeria. We were 1,500 miles to 2,500 miles away from land. And we were constantly being tracked by two orbs, port side. Which uh, brother, you got you got to get to your question, brother, because I got mm -hmm. a lot of people. We only got 15 minutes left. You got to get to your question, brother. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just, just want to let y'all know that everything, all the UFO stuff is legit. You can't have no drones 2,500 to 1,500 miles out there. So what people are seeing... Is 100. So quick question, uh, Doc. <clears throat> I know you talk about, and uh, Brother Billy has always talked about, the uh, in, in Lil's chest or his box of deceit and how it always keeps coming back to keep us entrapped. And could the most recent form of this doctrine of control or his little box of deceit to keep us in control would be the reinventing of the quote unquote uh, the letter of uh, the Willie Lynch letter. The Willie Lynch letter is an artificial letter written by a black man, and Correct. it was not it was not written by a white man. Correct. Uh, I got a chance to actually meet the brother when I was uh, when when I was down there with Bobby in Atlanta, and we were touring down in Atlanta down by the uh, black bookstore, um, but. Um, I, what I am saying is I don't doubt that there are orbs and that there are ways we have. There are tunnels that lead from one um, domed uh, one domed enclave uh, of, of nations and territories into the same enclave. That's how our oil is given to us. It's, it's actually pumped from another um, uh, outside of the Antarctic into our reality underground. Mm. So no. what it all feel ironically, so I know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so yes. what happens now is the orbs that we're dealing with at this time, you have to you have to look at the fact that there are technologies that are actually now and in <clears throat> in service. These orbs themselves are uh, what you call um, what is that uh, holograms? They're actually right. holograms that have the ability to pick up information. And what they do is you can actually broadcast them from stations like they have about 20 of these stations that are exactly like harp. Mm -hmm. And they are they, they have a way of dealing with bouncing light in, uh, information off of the ionosphere so that you can actually they can actually manipulate orbs of light that actually pick up information and reflect it back to the ionosphere and back to the uh, station where they're actually monitoring the planet. Like so an NMAR signal. Excuse me? Like an NMARSAT C signal. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. excellent. So what you're looking at essentially is they're using the dome and the atmospheric layers as a means of projecting images and allowing those images to have life and to be used and manipulate like toggles <laughs> so that you can work with those. The same way that they do have bases beyond the Antarctic and outside of the dome. I'll show you where Mars is. It ain't up above the dome. It's actually on the, on the, the, uh, the, the level plane, but under other domes and other realities outside. In fact, there is, a, there is a portal up in the Antarctic called the Gate of Osiris. <sighs> that leads directly into a whole other circle of that looks like Antarctica, but it has, uh, they, they built a, a city uh, for for Hitler, there called Asgard, and the mm. the the Antarctic is a lifter wow. pump for the oil from the south indeed. to us. To us, indeed. Correct. Mm -hmm. it's, that's what mm. the city down there for. The city is pretty much a pump station. Yes, indeed. And, and, and you, we wait till you see what's under the ocean. Mm. We ain't seen what's under the ocean yet. <laughs> Thank oh. you, brother. You're very well knowledgeable. Thank you. Hey, hey yeah, yeah. Shockwave, I, uh, you should uh, try to call another time. I, I, I'm interested in hearing more of what you got to say, but we got to uh, hurry up. We press with time tonight. But uh, I can tell you're knowledgeable, brother. So call another time or email me if you get an opportunity, Shockwave.
Roger, will do. Thank y'all. Yes, sir. Peace. Let's keep it moving, family. Trey Soul. Trey Soul, what's happening, my brother? Peace, peace, fam. All right. So, um, so I just have a personal question. It's kind of random. It might sound strange, but so on a daily, it doesn't matter where I go, but I experience people following me and staring at me, mm. and it um, mm -hmm. it makes me uncomfortable. I know, like, I know a lot of people may like, you know, that type of attention, but it, it's gotten to the point where it kind of like I'm trying to understand what it could mean and how to deal with those emotions well, during those times. Yeah. What I'm thinking is that you, what you need to be doing is if you are giving off certain energies that's making people take notice of you and you're doing it unconsciously, you have to consciously not care about it. Mm. And what's happening is you're amplifying the, the, inter, the interchange of magnetic energies by focusing on the fact that the magnetic energy is there. And these people are essentially focusing on what you're giving off in your aura. The mm -hmm. more you do that, the more you are going to become attractive to other people. It's just like something magical happens to you and you say, oh, that was so magical. How did it happen? No, nah, it happened. And it's the nonchalance that keeps you giving that ability or having that ability and that power. It's when you overemphasize your attention on it, it begins to dissipate. Because essentially your attention to it, which is actually based in survival, fear, and so forth, will cause that to dissipate. I would suggest you go into a, a, a place of meditation. Mm -hmm. And do not try to find anything in that place of meditation. When you go into meditation, just observe what comes into your mind without assigning a judgment to what it is you're seeing mm. in your mind. When that happens, whatever it is, that that thing is will reveal itself to you and you will be in control of it instead of it in control of you. Excellent. So Excellent. your meditative state is very important and your thought process right now, which is overemphasizing that particular situation where people are looking at you, Definitely. is making you more and more vulnerable. Indeed. I appreciate Thanks. that. was great advice. I appreciate that. Great. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the uh, question, Trey. For sure. Peace out. All right. Peace. Peace out. Let's keep it moving with... Uh... Thais, Thais, are you there? Thais. Thais, Thais, are you there? Hello. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Um, So I just have a question. I started my spiritual journey like about a year ago, I would say. And I've really been learning about like my past traumas and like just things that I have to deal with. And my question is, how do I learn how to control my emotions in certain situations? Because sometimes like my anxiety like is overwhelming like extremely to the point where I feel like I have no control over it so like for example the other day I live in New York City and that event happened and I felt myself like completely overwhelmed by, by my emotions so I just want to learn how to control that for like future uh for the future basically beloved you sound like a very young and very impressionable young lady um, you're basing your own experience with the world on fear. That's the basis of your whole reality right now. And that operative word you use consistently, control, is always going to make you be controlled. So you're being controlled by your need to control. And by that particular uh, frame of mind, you are you're actually amplifying the fear, the fight or flight. So it's not giving you the ability to stop for the moment and to assess the reality of what is there, not what you think is there, but what is really there. So I would suggest that your meditation is focused on why you fear not being in control. Because the world is a, is, is a horrible place. And we all feel we need to be in control in order to survive. That in itself becomes a kind of cancer of the mind because it begins to eat away at every resolve you have. It takes away your power to manifest. So I would suggest that you look to those two words, control and fear. Those are the two that you're operating from right now. You need to release those and how they're controlling you because they're there. Okay. 
so much. Thank you for your advice. I really appreciate it. Most Thank you for the call. All right, peace. Uh, we're gonna keep it moving. We got mindful, mindful woman. Hi, thank you both so right. much for the work that you guys do. Right. Um, my question is simple. Um, do you think it's necessary to do away with our birth certificates and establish a live life claim? Yes, um, the birth certificate is a um, is a bearer bond, and you can cash it. The United States needs bonds right now. <laughs> That's the truth. But there's a process that you can do to uh, to actually do that. And it's it's long, it's arduous. You have to come out of the system. You cannot be a corporate entity in order for you to cash that bond. The birth certificate bond right now, your birth certificate bond, depending on when you were born, uh, you may have multi-millions of dollars, fiat dollars, of course, but you may have multi-millions of dollars that are assigned to that particular bond over the years that they used it to leverage debt. Right. So what I would suggest is um, there are people who know how to access that bond, but the United States right now is getting ready to crash everything. Right. And they're, they're beginning to get into the blockchain, of course. And, mm -hmm. I, and you heard me suggest getting the XRP, XLM, XDC, mm -hmm. HBAR. These are the top five that I would suggest that you get into because um, right now, gold, silver, copper, and there's another one. These are the ones that are going to actually skyrocket in <coughs> value this time. So yeah, um, if you do have coins, there are ways for you to buy gold. You can go up to glintpay.com, G-L-I-N-T. I do have glint. I got that from when you recommended it a while ago. And Fantastic. I've been and you can sell gold, and they give you a card for you to deal with that. These yeah. are the ways you take your money out of the banks. Right. Because the banks have this thing where they can actually take your money to pay debt. Right. All right. Yeah. So I would say that, yes, um, going after your bond, your your uh, bond is an arduous process. I know it. I have a few people who have been going through hell and high water to try to get mm -hmm. the money that are attached to that. So I would suggest that you look into that, but just start getting into XRP, XLM, mm -hmm. XDC, HBAR. And there's another one uh, that I could recommend to you, but uh, that's down the line. But the top of the line, the king and the mm -hmm. queen, XRP, king, XLM, the queen. Okay. I think you meant um, the other one was quaint. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank, you, thank you for the question. All right. All right. We're going to do two quick questions and then we get out of here, family. Two more quick okay. ones then we get out of here. Pearly Falcon. Are you there? Pearly Falcon. Are you there? Pearly Falcon, are you there? No, Pearly Falcon, none left. All right, so much for that. We got uh, Michaela. Mac what's, what's your name, sis? M oh, hey. Uh, Bubba, hey. Bubba, Michelle hey. Renee. Michelle, okay. <laughs> hey, yes, hi, Bubba. Oh, hey. blessings. I'm so hey. happy to see you. Hey, I'm you glad did. to be on. Yes, mm -hmm. and you look well. Yes, I wanted to also commend you for sharing with the young lady, Thais, about that, um, that uh, those fear mm -hmm. and control issues. Because that's, you know, yes. I work with women and I help them to eliminate that permanently. And so yes. it can be done. Yes. But anyways, I wanted to ask you, we're going to be at the uh, Conscious Awards um, in July. So I'm definitely hoping to see you. And um, so <laughs> what I wanted to find out, is um, what do you feel is happening with all of a sudden the ban uh, that the so-called NAACP has put on um, mm, the um, uh, yes uh, the 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 travel ban on our melanated communities because a lot of us got our tickets and blah 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 beforehand and a lot of us are are in the midst of this this travel you know look at the um, uh, the basketball. Um, um, finals, it was back and forth to Miami, right in the midst of all of this stuff. And so what do you feel is actually happening in, in trying to keep that melanin um, vibratory energy out of Florida? Yeah, well, I, I look at it this way. I don't listen to anything these black organizations that are run by the boule. I don't listen to anything they have to say. That especially those who 
the NAACP, which was started by a white man who was essentially a uh, Ashkenazim, and also mm -hmm. the <clears throat> the 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 na what is that the the National Black what is this uh, the um, African American National yeah. Black African yeah the yeah National NAACP um, yeah the National Black Caucasians that's the ones and right, uh, right. those are the ones there. These are all initiated from college to do the bidding and to keep us into the slave mind of the European. So I don't, you know, travel ban, nobody going to ban me to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Right, good. And, you know, it's ridiculous yeah. for them to do that because what they're doing is, again, thinking that we're cattle and they want to accrue power to move against the Republican state. You have to remember that the Democrats have been taken over by the Marxists. And the Marxist communists are the ones running things now. They want mm -hmm. an oligarchic control where the individual mm -hmm. no longer exists. They've mm -hmm. come in and changed the English language completely mm -hmm. so we can't even identify yeah. one another anymore. We don't even know Correct. what sex is anymore. This is an attack, psychological attack. It's a psyop. The mm -hmm. whole transgender movement is a psyop. And you have Man. to understand that from that particular perspective. So... I would suggest that if you're listening to a black organization, that a black organization is not an autochthonous organization. It does okay. not have anything to do with our indigenous status. It wants us to be corporate citizens, getting welfare consistently from the corporation. Okay. So I would mm -hmm. stay away from any kind of nonsense that they would put out there as an edict. They look ridiculous. They were sitting in Congress with, uh, with Kente cloth, and these Negroes don't do a damn thing for people of color. Woo! Damn. Uh, hey, I, I love it. Thank I, you. Thank you. you. Oh, and thank oh. you, Brother Rich. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rich, for, for popping me in here. And I'm so glad to see my Baba. We yeah. go way back. I love it. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Peace. Yeah, thank you. All right. Ashe. All right. We doing one last caller before we leave. Oh, what a show. What a show. Oh, man. Let's put this on the screen again. I mean, wow. Doc, you'll see how much information this brother got. I mean, you ask him a question and he just goes off. That's why he's able to go for 10 hours, family. Re-examining the authenticity of reality. Phase one, exposing and decoding the heliocentric hoax. The mother of all conspiracies. Phase two, transdimensional pathways. Time travel via frequency portals in space-time. This is happening June 25th, family. 2 p.m. Eastern time. Sharp. The, sharp. <laughs> The link is in the description for those who are interested in joining. But wow, what a show! Thank you. Uh, what a show! Uh, Thank you family. for the time, brother. You know, I'm, you know, really, I'm loving you for everything that you're doing for you know the community, and uh, you know, allowing me to have access to the community. You're doing a fantastic work. Everybody should be actually seeing what this brother really is made of by his actions, not just his words, but his actions, and that's what makes him the man that he is. Indeed, Doc. Let's get to this last call. Let me see if Pearly Falcon is ready yet. Are you? Pearly Falcon, you ready? What, you, you there? What? Yo, what's up, Rich? Oh, what's I'm happening? ready. You can hear me? Yeah, hey, you good now. You good now. Yo, what's up? Hey, blessings. Blessings to y'all. Blessings to you, Brother Rich, and blessings to you, um, Dr. Phil Valentine. You know, I'm a student of y'all. I got a quick question. I'm not going to hold y'all for too long. But, um, you know, uh, Red Pill and uh, Kebulon and Blue Pill, I think they've been talking about... Um, you know, the theme, the theme for whatever going on right now, you know, socially and cosmically or whatever, everything is orange. You know, I want to I want to get your your take on it, uh, Dr. Phil, you know, and, uh, you know, your take on the whole the, uh, thing about the orange. And, uh, you know, NYC had orange clouds everywhere and everything like that. So I want to know your take on that. And also what would be the next color that they would uh, have for the, you know, cosmically? And, uh, well, that was, if, that's, uh, if you're dealing with colors, the one that they don't want you to access is the purple and uh, the higher chakra. They want to stop you from getting to the green, which is your heart, where the soul resides. And from there, accelerating to the purple, because you're going to see a lot of uh, disruption. If you're talking about orange colors, the thing I go right back to is the second chakra which deals with the bowels, which deals with your sexuality, which deals with you uh, dealing with uh, you eating certain types of foods, 
because that orange, that area down around the between uh, the 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 green chakra, which is the heart chakra, and the bowels. That's the area where they're going to be attacking. In fact, when anyone who has uh, what you call um, the spectrum of autism, that's in the bowels. It's in the orange section. Mm. So when you're dealing with uh, the people who have autism, it's the flora in the bowels that causes the disturbance and the 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 short circuiting of the electrical patterns of common sense and logic. It takes place where it disjoints the ability for your frontal lobe to focus into this third density reality and see it for what it is. That's why you see that certain people who have or a part of, a part of the, the autistic spectrum, they have only one part of their brain developed. And their overemphasis on that, they can play or they can do numbers, they can do certain things, they have memories. You see that brother who looked at the scape of New York and then all of a sudden just drew from memory every portion of New York that he saw. Now, if they want you to focus on only one thing and not have the ability for you to broaden your perspective and allow the Kundalini to rise to the heart chakra, to the throat chakra, to the brow chakra, and to the crown chakra, they're going to keep you locked down in the physical portion, which is this portion here. The abdominal is what deals with your day-to-day, -day, uh, 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 you know, corporate, the job, your family, all of that. So if orange is the color that they're attacking or they're causing disturbances in, they're attacking you at the fundamental level of your physical existence. And that is where you digest your food, where your food becomes nutrition, and where that nutrition feeds into your body. If they can cause a disruption in this area, which they have with that uh, thing that they do that causes the uh, disruption in the brain and causes the autistic uh, spectrum, then they can do that. I don't know what everybody else is saying about that, but I know that any time a color is being used, it's an attack against the chakra, one of the chakras. Mm, powerful. Hey, uh, Pearly, I appreciate that question, my brother. Yes, thank y'all. Thank y'all. All right now. All right, all right, peace. All right, and with that being said, family, we're getting ready to wrap it up. Uh, let me put this fly on the screen one last time for tonight, family. Mm -hmm. Re-examining the authenticity of reality family is going down June 25th, 2023 at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Dr. Phil Valentine will be going in for 10 or more hours. It's going to be an amazing webinar. I can't wait to uh, see what the brothers got to say. Like I said, family, I never, ever got into the flat earth thing. So many other things for me to concentrate on. I said, I'm going to wait until I start studying because that's that sounds confusing as F. <laughs> so... I'm glad that this brother's doing it. I, want, I can't wait to hear and see what he has to say about it so I could understand the structure of this reality and the structure of Earth and space and all that on a deeper level. So with that being said, uh, Doc, how you yes. want to close it out with the people tonight, Doc? Amazing show, Doc. You did an amazing job, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I do that because you have an amazing ability to be able to ask the right questions and to, put, you, uh, to put me into a focus where I can actually tap into the archives that I don't even know I have until mm. such time as the question has been posed. So it's a, it's a lot. It's something we, we do here at the, at our school. If you mm. don't understand that the universe is an answer and that you are the proverbial question, the creator mm. created you to be the proverbial question. question. So if you understand how to form the perfect question, then the universe will give you the perfect, perfect. answer. Mm. So with that, I, you know, I just want to say to everybody, if you're having problems, Make sure that when you do register, that you're registering as a guest. Sometimes people are having problems with the PayPal, and they think they have to go into PayPal. No, they don't. Right there, you have the ability to pay for the webinar and to use the guest link in order for you to be uh, to give uh, uh, to get your. Now, remember, that's another thing. You don't get the link to the webinar until such time as the day of the webinar. So look out for the webinar, say maybe an hour, two hours, maybe right up to the point where the actual uh, the event, when the actual event is taking place. So on the 25th, be looking out and make sure you check your spam and everything for the link that uh, and, and make that link 
uh, something important. In other words, make your, your email recognize that link or recognize that particular uh, um, Zoom slash PayPal. Uh, 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 I think it's, what is it, the, the URL? Yeah, make sure that you, you, you click and say that it's important, in other words. And with that, if you're having a problem, uh, you can always uh, write me at sunu, S-U-N-N-U, 777 at gmail, S-U-N-N-U, 777 at gmail.com. Also, if you wish to sign up for the university, you can go up online to UKSNOW.org. Uh, Brother Brother Rich has already put all that information, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, description. description. And uh, from that particular point, uh, all I can say is, once again, thank you. Uh, for the opportunity to reach out to our brothers and sisters and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody there on the 25th. Be ready. Be ready. All right. It's going down June 25th, family. This is Brother Rich, Dr. Phil Valentine. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We signing out, family. Peace. Peace. All right.